Yeah, listen, hey, it's one of those subjects uh, that uh, we have an obligation to our audience, not because anybody says we have to do it, but because it probably is the courteous thing to do. We are going to be talking about a very, very serious sexual subject. Has to do with human sexuality, has to do with the graphic presentation thereof, and it has to do with one of the specialties of Jeff Schultz. Uh, Jeff, who is a certified sex addiction therapist in private mm -hmm. practice? Yes. Yeah. Here in the Valley, mm -hmm. and um, I would guess that probably it's like a, a, another one of those subjects when somebody says, this is what I do, and people say, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And they either are filled with questions mm -hmm. or they go to the other side of the room. Uh, in this case, we invited you specifically to talk about addiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you respond to the critics mm -hmm. of sex addiction? Those who say, some of them, right. uh, highly respected medical people who say, nah, there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. It's just an excuse. Yeah. Well, there is a lot of evidence right now, research evidence, and it's showing up in big organizations, big kind of countrywide organizations, that it's a disease and that the, in, the alterations or the changes in the brain that are a consequence of using sex frequently, uh, all the arousal, all of the dopamine that that triggers in the brain causes changes in the brain. Uh, and that's the same kind of change that happens in other addictions. So there are people with different views and opinions about all this, uh, and the evidence shows that they're wrong. Yeah, but what about the lady who's right now at home uh -huh. saying, oh, they're talking about sexual addiction. Uh -huh. I knew I married one. Murray will not leave me alone. <laughs> right, and so uh, Murray's behavior, uh, well, Murray's behavior might be just fine. Uh, it might be that if there are no problems, if they're not you know, suffering any losses, that. Uh, his well, behaviors. Well, losses like what? What kind of problems? What if uh -huh. Murray just likes to do it a lot, and yeah. maybe Mrs. Murray is okay with that? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, if if Murray does like to do it and it's okay uh, with her, and it is from a place of intimacy and love, and there's honesty yes. and vulnerability for them both, uh, that's good stuff, uh, and it's just fine. That's the realm of healthy sexuality. If instead it looks a little different, and if instead it's uh, Murray is about six or seven times a week or, or more, uh, the frequency is not the big deal, but the interest he has in mostly just getting to the end, uh, finishing the deed, so to speak. And not always necessarily with Mrs. Murray. I mean, yeah. does, does it also relate to promiscuity? Uh, or are we talking about sexual addicts? And we so often talk mm -hmm. about men. I'm assuming it's not just no. uh, a, a clear gender separation here. Right. right. Uh, but is it also something uh, that is not necessarily always associated with a partner? Well, sure, yeah. Uh, with sex, we can, you can get there in, in a whole lot of different ways. Uh, when we say somebody's compulsive with sex or addicted to sex, it's really the physiological experience they have, the feel good uh, about that. So uh, what goes on in their brain, and uh, it does feel good. Nature wants us to have it. Uh, and so whatever form it shows up in, uh, very often that's the case. It's not just uh, at home. I don't even know how you define pornography, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's one of those umbrella terms uh, right. It's like the Supreme Court said years and years and years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we'll determine what is obscene when we see it. I'll know uh -huh. what it is when, when I see it. Yeah. Well, that isn't really good enough to make legislation about. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that which is pornographic, mm -hmm. is it just uh, a matter of graphic presentation of sexual acts? Is it perhaps mm -hmm. just naked people? Yeah, it, it probably doesn't matter too much. I'm, you know, the definition of it. The guys that I work with, they, they don't have the luxury of, of uh, nude images, of topless images, or even Sports Illustrated type of images. Um, because what for them is, is arousing is, uh, you know, across the spectrum there. Well, give me right. the spectrum. Uh, well, it depends on someone individually what they might define it as. But, you know, certainly with the internet, uh, pornography on the internet is a range of content that's unending. Um, and and far more available than any time in the history of mankind. Right. Yeah, the accessibility, the, the anonymity, uh, the fact that somebody can be alone in their room after their spouse goes to bed uh, or on, uh, you know, on a day off. Uh, and these guys, uh, men and women, will have un full access to, uh, to as much content as they like. And they're not going to run out of this, uh, different from other drugs. But if they like seeing those images every so often, if right. that's stimulating to them, 
every so often, does that mean that it's addictive? No. No, I, it, it's not in the frequency uh, necessarily. I mean, there's a problem with the internet in that there's a freak, uh, there's a novelty, there's an unending novelty. Each image or each video is another uh, arousal experience or another potential mate. That's what the brain sees. It doesn't really care uh, what is in that image. It just says this is another uh, opportunity, and so it shoots off all the feel-good stuff that guides behavior. So it's the reward that says and nature wants us to have sex in order to continue. Um, more of us, more of the, the DNA that we have. So mom and dad used to freak out when they found a Playboy magazine yeah. under the bed, right? Uh -huh. And now mom and dad are freaking out because they walk in and here is the most graphic form of sexuality mm -hmm. in all of its forms mm -hmm. on the screen. Should they freak out because their kids are exposed to that? Yeah, that's, that's probably wise to freak out. I mean, so many kids have computers in their room and they're able to access stuff that never before was available. But um, is it always harmful? Any kind of exposure to graphic sexuality? Yeah, if we're talking about kids, teenagers, that access or that exposure is going to create a sexual lens for them to, to experience the rest of courtship, of relationships, of meeting girls. Um, it does create a, a problem. They begin from that very early age to see things um, it, bodies, body parts, to sort of remove that body from who that person really is. But boy, are we encouraged to do something about improving our sexuality mm -hmm. on every possible level. The yes. latest thing, testosterone therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, an enormous number of us who didn't know how to spell testosterone, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, uh, we are told, you don't have enough, come get yeah. some. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and you'll see that all over the place. That, that driving the other day, hearing about four or five ads almost in a row just for supplements. Uh, and I have a thought about it, an idea that, that probably much of that is in the brain and not in the, uh, in the equipment, so to speak, uh, the problem. Uh, in other words, testosterone, that's something that's normal aging uh, and where, where that problem sets up is in a different place uh, than something like pornography. But pornography is going to impair your ability to be Effect, or be sexual, be um, uh, healthy in your sexuality. Can everyone get some kind of relief from the problem if one, if one is a sexual addict, mm -hmm. if one goes to a specialist? Yeah, yeah, if, they, if they're out of control, uh, they have some sense of that. Uh, and, and it is so much in secret that and they're very likely to keep that secret until they have no choice, uh, being discovered or, or, or otherwise. But Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Jeff Schultz uh, is one of the people who specializes in this area. Please take it seriously, especially because of the fact that we told you about it on the morning scramble on a Thursday morning. Time now for the CenturyLink question of the day. If you know the answer, be the first correct caller at 602-224-2237 for your chance to win.